Hey everybody, this is Jason Akers with Green Acres Pest Control. Coming at you live on Friday night. I finally did it. I made it on time. Thumbs up for me. <laughs> I uh, actually have down to the wire. I, I, uh, I wanted to talk about the reproductive cycle of bed bugs tonight. It's one thing we've been talking a lot about. That's why this is called the bed bug show. But, um, I mean, we could talk about anything, any questions that you have, any, uh, you know, information you may want to share with me, or, uh, you know, anything at all. We can just sit here and talk for a while if you want. I'm actually getting ready to add an image here that I uh, had my wife send me. And, like I said, I'm kind of still getting things together, but I wanted to make sure I came on live at 10 o'clock trying to turn over a new leaf 2018 I'm gonna see if I can do this on a normal schedule I got one weekend so we got what 52 more to go 53 52 51 I don't know a year goes by so fast so let's see here tonight we're gonna to talk about life cycle of a bed bug so Let's see if I can. Wow, that really put it right up there, didn't it? Let's go ahead and move this. Where is it? Right there. There we go. All right. Uh, just so you know, I'm starting this new thing tonight. I'm going to get this set out real quick. Uh, if you like the channel, the movies, videos, whatever. Uh, give me a thumbs up on my videos. Leave me a comment below if you're catching this because these are all saved later so you could watch these later. I've, I usually have a lot of information, a lot of really good information so you could watch them back later. I actually have uh, YouTube save the VOD so you can go back and watch them at a later date. Uh, of course if you watch them live there's no ads or anything like that but you know YouTube does tend to put ads advertisements in them when it plays them back so you catch me live you don't have any advertisement or anything like that it's just all completely candid I answer any questions you've got but uh, anyway I've, I've started this new thing uh, this week this year actually where you can tweet pictures to me at Green Acres PC which is right down there I put that on the uh, on the feed so you can see it um, Anytime that you have questions, I know a lot of people send me pictures. They want to know how to get a picture to me. They want me to identify a picture. Now, I want to say right here, I'm not an entomologist. I've been doing pest control for 30 years about, and uh, I've seen a lot of bugs. I've had to identify a lot of bugs, and I'm pretty good at it. Here, let me turn this. This looks like I'm peeking a lot on my microphone. Let me turn it down a little bit. Hopefully, I won't be blaring your ears out too much, but... um anyway like I was saying if you if you have any images if you have a picture of a bed bug and you'd like to make sure that's what it is or a flea or a tick or whatever uh, you know mosquito whatever's biting you um, don't hesitate to send me a tweet a tweet of the picture I'm new to this Twitter thing so you got to give me a little leeway on it I'm working on it but I think I've got the hang of it now I did tweet out tonight when I went live so if you uh, you know, if you follow me on Twitter, you will get those notifications. Um, if you're big into Twitter, you'll get those notifications whenever I go live. I typically try to tweet within 10, 15 minutes of when I'm actually planning to go live. So if it's a week where 10 o'clock's not going to work and maybe I'm on later or maybe I'm on earlier, I will, of course, tweet you in advance about, you know, 10, 15 minutes so you get that notification comes up. Um, so anyway... Uh, tonight we're going to talk about, and, and just so you know, there is a little live stream right over here. And uh, if you want to ask me any question, uh, know that it will be on a live chat, so people will see your question. Um, but I have absolutely no problem asking, answering any question. Actually, last weekend, if you want to go and, and watch my uh, last show from last week, we talked a lot about rats and mice, uh, good ways to bait, good baiting techniques. Um, how to bait for rats and mice and what kind of bait you can get so you can go back and look at that video I also did a mouse Monday back in November I've got five episodes of mouse Mondays I'm, I'm working on a cockroach Monday bear with me I am working on it I am trying to get this video out to you as soon as possible but I'm gonna go into baiting for cockroaches and, and 
chemical treatments and different things like that. It does take a lot of preparation and a lot of involvement in those videos, a lot of cutting and pasting and moving stuff around and video editing. and uh, It does take a little longer to get those videos out, a lot longer than, uh, you know, a live stream or some of the candid videos that you're used to on my YouTube channel. So anyway, uh, if you want to go and catch that uh, any of that information, go back look at my channel. Uh, most recent videos, it's from last Friday, uh, which would have been um, right around New Year's. So you can go check that out if you want. But tonight we're going to talk about the life cycle of a bed bug. Now, of course, the eggs are about the size. Let me see if I get something here to show you in comparison um she was a pencil eraser a pencil pencil lead all right that's you whoa that is you see the tip of that pencil that's about how big an egg is of a bed bug you can see it a lot of people don't think that they are visible they believe that they're microscopic that's actually not true uh, you can see bed bugs. They are something you can see with the naked eye. You can see the eggs. You can see the um, all that stuff. So uh, I just want to make sure that that I explain that to you. You can see the eggs. You can see the nymphs at all stages and the adults. Um, the adult is about the size of an apple seed or about the size of the pencil eraser right there. That's how big an adult is. So you can visibly see them. You can make them out. Uh, I have a question here. Does diatomaceous earth work for removing bed bugs? Diatomaceous earth does work to kill bed bugs. I do have a video on my channel about uh, diatomaceous earth and why you should not use it. It will uh, chase bed bugs really bad. It can kill them. Don't get me wrong. It does kill bed bugs. It's very slow acting on bed bugs. It, uh, the problem with diatomaceous earth is most people do not know how to properly apply it. Now, last week's channel, I did go over diatomaceous earth and a little bit on how to apply dusts, and I showed a picture of a duster. I believe I showed a picture of a duster. Let me see, just to make sure, because I might, I might be wrong. Let me do a search here. And I'll show you what one looks like because this is something I really need to explain. Now this is a Google search. So let me share my window here. Oh, uh, let me hide that one. There you go. This is a Bella's duster. You see how it's got the, is it gonna show my cursor? I don't think it's gonna show my cursor. Let me see if I can fix that. Well, it's supposed to be showing my cursor. Oh well. Anyway, oh yeah, there we go. So there's your bellows duster. You put your dust in there, and you you want to fill it maybe about half full. You turn it upside down. So this is right side up. This is what I consider right side up of a duster. You turn it upside down. You shake it really good. So you're, you're actually, what you're doing is you're forming a cloud inside the duster, and that's that little air space of dust, because it's dust. You know, when you blow on dust, it blows up in the air and it puffs up, and then you can't even see it anymore. So what you're doing is you're creating a cloud, and you'll want to take the matting underneath your box spring you make a little hole just big enough to where that duster will kind of push in that hole and you can kind of fog the inside of your box spring that's about the only good use for diatomaceous earth when it comes to bed bugs you can do similar things like that behind your baseboards and around your window like the cracks around your windowsill and places like that but it's just not going to be very effective in those areas if it gets wet it's not going to work at all and all you're going to do is you're going to keep bed bugs from being able to live inside your box spring. It's not going to stop them from being alive. It's going to keep them from living in your box spring because they're not going to want to live around it. Diatoms are basically they're they're fossilized remains of uh, crustaceans that live in the ocean. You know, basically, and so it it reacts on a bug like Samexa. If you've ever heard of Semexa, I know a lot of people who deal with bed bugs have. It's like silica. So what it does, in fact, the, ba the vast majority of the bulk of diatomaceous earth is made up of silica dust. Um, it dries out the bug, 
and the diatoms kind of they're abrasive so it's like kind of rubbing sandpaper or glass over top of the bed bugs so they don't necessarily bleed to death but it causes uh, little fractures in their exoskeleton which will cause them to dry dry out quicker so yes diatomaceous earth will help with bed bugs it's not an end-all solution for bed bugs and I am sorry I am having a lot of issue with my video output tonight I've not having the best bandwidth and so some people may be experiencing some buffer issues uh, I'm sorry there's not really a lot I can do it's Friday night and a lot of people are using the internet here where I live so work with me bear with me um, I'm really suffering a lot from from server lag tonight so if I do if I do get a little garbled that's what's going on. I actually think my wife might be watching a video on her laptop and that's causing me a lot of issues being able to stream tonight. So, uh, I don't think she can hear me either. Can you hear me? You're causing me to buffer. So anyway, I hope I uh, answered your question about diatomaceous earth. Hope that was able to help you at all. But it's not really an end-all solution. You'll still want to use some kind of a um, a chemical uh, like Crossfire or Alpine WSG. Um, you know, some kind of a residual chemical to treat around in order to treat the places that you can't use the dust that aren't going to be as effective with dust. Um, dust gets vacuumed up. It also, you know, like I said, it gets messed up if it um, if it gets wet, it won't work. If it gets vacuumed up, of course, it's not going to work. And so those other areas, like the outside of your box spring, you can treat that with Crossfire Alpine. Both are allowed to be treated. Now, as far as I know, Crossfire is the only thing that can be broadcast over an entire mattress. Um, other Most chemicals can't. Crossfire can. In fact, Crossfire can be used everywhere you think you might have problems with bed bugs. That's why I recommend it. It's very safe. It doesn't even have a signal word in, on the label, so it's it's a very safe pesticide. So just, just to use that, just to help you with that. Um, like I said, please bear with me. I know I'm buffering really bad tonight. I've got a really poor signal strength tonight, but uh, work with me. I'm trying to get that fixed right now. Um, so anyway, like I was talking about, we were going over this, uh, oh, there's my car. Got my car today, had it wrapped. I would show you the whole thing, but there's some uh, images in the background, signs and stuff like that that you can't really, uh, I can't really show on my stream. But uh, let's see, where is, there it is. Okay. If you had to pick a worse one to get rid of, which is worse, bed bugs or cockroaches? Cockroaches. Cockroaches are the worst. Uh, mainly, the reason that cockroaches are the worst to get rid of is because they have problem. I have a lot of problem with chemical immunity in cockroaches. It's something I've fought over for my whole life, ever since I've been dealing with roaches. Bed bugs. I know a lot of people are claiming they are immune to different chemicals out there. Uh, I know somebody just posted on my channel the other day that they are immune to neonicotinoids. I have yet to run into a single strain of bed bug that's immune to car Crossfire yet. Uh, I have run into chemical resistant bed bugs when it comes to pyrethrins, synthetic pyrethroids. Um, they are immune, but as far as I know, it's a biological immunity so they're actually immune to synthetic pyrethroids naturally um, it's not like roaches where they develop an immunity now here's the problem with cockroaches cockroaches adapt very well to pesticides what happens a lot of times is people will apply a pesticide that is weak it's, it's not necessarily mixed weak on purpose. It's not really mixed to kill cockroaches. If you go to Walmart, Southern States, um, Lowe's, Home Depot, and you buy, oh, let's see, pretty much any pesticide. Most pesticides that are labeled to sell to the consumer 
are already they already come pre-mixed unless you actually buy concentrate most of the time it's it's pre-mixed pesticide so usually they're mixed for things like spiders ants crickets silverfish centipedes you know general pest control and unless it's something like raid which is really only used to kill on contact you're not going to get a residual the chemical is actually pretty weak for when you kill German cockroaches. Let me show you. Let me actually show you a label. Let's try... Um, and I'll give you an, an example of what I mean by uh, a weak concentration of, of pesticide. Oh, that's a wettable powder. I don't want that. Um, there it is. Okay. Um, there we go. This is for Demon Max. This is a pesticide that I have used before. Excuse me. I'm trying to keep my throat from drying out on you. Um, this is cypromethrin. That's the active ingredient. Right there. There's your active ingredient, cypromethrin. Um, if you scroll down here, let's see here. Directions for use, how to mix it, you know, like tells you one gallon, uh, 1.3 ounces, 2.6 ounces. This is the concentrate, you got a 0.50%, you got a 1%. Uh, this is how they expect you to mix your pesticide. A rate of emulsions, 25%, one gallon. See, this is this is all this information now. If you scroll down to, let's see if we can find it on here. Oh, wait a minute. This is, I think this is the actual, this might be for termites, because you can, oh, here we go. Pests. Ants. Cockroaches, cockroaches clean out. Here we go. Now you see this, this right here says cockroaches, in order to do a clean out for cockroaches, here, let me scroll that down a little bit, it needs to be mixed at a 0.2%. Now, otherwise it's a 0.1% if you're not doing a clean out. Now a clean out is a surface, is, it, it's, a, it's a service that you do, typically it's like the first, second service. Um, where you're going in and you're doing a massive, uh, very, very invasive, you're pulling everything out of the cabinets, you're treating very thoroughly, that's called a clean out service. Now for cockroaches, it says right on the label, it needs to be mixed for a clean out for cockroaches at a 0.2%. Most of the time when you buy pesticides at the store, they're mixed at a 0.1%. So they're actually mixed at half the concentration to what you actually need to get rid of a cockroach infestation. And what that does is it will, uh, when people start applying that chemical, see it's half a fluid ounce per one gallon of water or a full ounce for one gallon of water to get rid of a, a, on a clean out service. So the problem is, is when you go to the store and you buy a chemical that's actually labeled for, um, you know, a clean out service needs to be mixed at twice the strength, but you're buying a normal pesticide that's for all these other bugs listed here. Um, that's what you're buying the chemical for. You're not actually buying it for cockroaches. Even though it's got cockroaches on the label, they're assuming you've already done a clean-out service. So that's the problem. And what'll happen is you'll actually end up breeding chemical immune cockroaches, and then they won't even die from this clean-out service because they're immune to the chemical. You're using half the concentration, half the strength, and it causes you to build, it causes you to, to produce chemical-resistant bugs. And that's the problem with with buying chemicals at the store to kill German cockroaches. You you really will save more money, more time just hiring a you know, a pest control guy to do your German cockroach cleanouts just because they they can get a hold of the, the the concentrate easier than you can and they can do the cleanout service and that's going to do overall it's going to save you money and it's going to save you time. And in my opinion, I think it's better to get to hire somebody to deal with German cockroaches. Now, with bed bugs, you can deal with bed bugs yourself. You can save a lot of money dealing with bed bugs yourself. 
Uh, they're a lot easier to get rid of, but really it just depends on how much work you're willing to do. Um, there's another question here. It says, uh, do you ever use any IGR for roaches? No, I don't. I don't use IGRs. I hate IGRs. I've never had one that's been really successful. Um, but let's see. Jody says, what do you think about enzymes to kill bed bugs, i.e. Persil and other detergents? Persil is how I got rid of mine. Well, you know, there's, uh, hey, Jimmy, I mean, Jeremy, Jeremy Burks. <laughs> uh, Jody, the thing is, I don't know if it works, it works. You know, enzymes, I've not used any. I really, I can't speak on them. I don't have a lot of experience with them. Like I said, a lot of people know I use Crossfire. It's what I recommend, and that's a chemical treatment. It's a neonicotinoid. That's what I use. It works really well. If you were able to get rid of your bed bugs, that's great. You know, use what works. That's the way I believe. I know there's a lot of people that use heat treatments, and they work. Do what works. That's how I feel about it. Um... Event, Jimmy, with a 2% build, it says, uh, he asks, uh, with that thought process, would 2% build an immunity as well? All right, here's the problem with, with cockroaches. All right, if you've got 100 cockroaches, 100 is easy to work with because it's easy to percentage with 100. If you've got 100 cockroaches and you mix it at 2% and you come in and you treat for German cockroaches and you eliminate 85, 90% of your problem, those 10 roaches that survive, the theory is that they are genetically immune to the chemical you've used anyway. So when they have offspring, they pass their genetics on to their offspring. So those offspring are going to be immune. So let's say you go in for your second treatment and you're using, let's say you're doing two cleanouts. All right, so your second cleanout, you're still using a 2%. But those 10 roaches have had babies. Some of them get the genes where they're immune and some of them don't. So now you may kill only 50%. All right, say they breed up to another 100 roaches or whatever. And now you kill 50%. Those 50 roaches, the reason they survive is because they're genetically immune. So what you do is you rotate your chemical. You, you don't just use one pesticide. You use several different pesticides together or apart you rotate your chemicals so what i do this is how i get rid of roaches i'll go in like let's say once a month let's say i go in on the first monday of the month i go in i treat the house on a clean out on the first monday next month which would be february if i go back in february and i treat again i use something different now the law in virginia states that you have to write on every piece of paperwork that you do you have to you have to put um which chemical, the address, all that stuff. So you know what you used last month. Just use something different. And that way you constantly keep your chemicals in rotation. And uh, that allows you to, um, to hopefully, theoretically, use something eventually that they're all going to eventually die. Because if they're, if they're immune from one chemical, they're not going to be immune to two. And if they're immune to two, they're not going to be immune to three. So you keep your three or four chemicals on rotation. And that way you're also always using something different. Use baits. Utilize baits. Use dust, boric acid, diatomaceous earth. Use all these things together so that you can get rid of them as quickly as possible. That's what I do. That's what I do with, with restaurants and everything. Because restaurants, you really need to get rid of them quick. And I treat homes just like I do restaurants. So, And sometimes you have to step it up to twice a month so that you're you're going there every two or three weeks and you're constantly applying something new and fresh. So it's, it's really important to keep your chemicals new and fresh. Um, oh, <laughs> Brooke, <laughs> funny. Yeah, it can take six months to a year to get rid of roaches if they're really immune to a lot of chemicals. It really just depends on uh, what's been used and what's been applied and what the customer has used. But Jimmy here has asked several questions here. Let me see. I've used everything, powder spray, steam. I've got carpet through my entire house. Uh, how do I treat this? I've vacuumed, I've steamed, and used the diatomaceous earth and the bug bombs. Um, Jeremy, I... Let me see. What, are what I would actually recommend is I know I, I say this all the time. It's what I talked about on my last show. If you want, you can go back and look at last week's show. Uh, I actually show links. I show pictures. Um, Crossfire is what I recommend to get rid of bed bugs. Um, let's see here. Let me just bring it up here. 
I'll show you again. Don't mind. That's what we're talking about, right? This is it right here. This is Crossfire. Oh, wow. That's right behind my head, isn't it? See that? That's a really good pesticide. Now, this is on... This is on a website called Do It Yourself Pest Control. Let's see what they charge. Let's go ahead and go to it. Um, this is for a gallon. The uh, $318, that's a gallon of Crossfire. That'll list, that'll uh, mix, let's see, 13 ounces to a gallon. That's 10 gallons of finished concentrate. This is a 13 ounce. This is uh, for about 45, yeah, $45 for one gallon of finished product. That's what I recommend you use. I, uh, it's really good stuff. It's really great. Uh, I can't talk highly enough about it, honestly. It's it's amazing, amazing pesticide. Most people who have tried everything for bed bugs have never tried Crossfire. It's it's new. It's new within just the last couple years, but it's very effective. And probably because it's new, it's it's very very effective. Um, but I, I I've actually been able to get rid of bed bugs in one treatment with Crossfire. I'm not going to tell you you will. You probably won't. Um, in really severe cases, it can take over 90 days to get rid of the bed bugs when they're really, really out of control. If it's just a mild infestation, you might be able to get rid of them quicker. But, you know, I don't want to make promises and then, you know, you get upset with me because you can't get rid of them quick enough. So just understand that Crossfire, it's still a pesticide. It still has to be used like a pesticide, and it still can take some time to get rid of your problem. So just know, but typically not more than 90 days to 120 days usually. Um, so, you know, as long as you're willing to lift up your mattress, lift up your box spring, clean, uh, you know, clean out inside your couch, you know, and yeah, you know, do all that, then, then that... You can, I'll tell you, you can go to my website. It's greenacrespc.com. Uh, it's my last name, A-K-E-R-S, which it's, it's spelled right down there on the Twitter little thing down there. Uh, it's greenacrespc.com. And there's a link at the top of the, and this is for anybody here in the chat that has a question that, you know, you don't want to ask in the chat. You might be shy or whatever. You can go to that web page and up in the contact, you can click contact and you can go down and fill out that form with your email address. And I can email, I can do email correspondence or you can tweet me or you can send me a Facebook page too. I've got all my links on my web page for Facebook and everything. So I don't mind a messenger. I'll, I, uh, I correspond any way I can. I know I'm only local in Virginia. I can only, you know, really help people in Virginia, but I can help you the best. I can, you know, through correspondence. I've helped people all over the world with their bug problems. Um, so let's see here. What uh, now we get to Westwood here that says, What other? I'm gonna try to get to these questions as quickly as possible because I've got quite a it's boy, y'all got lots of questions tonight. <laughs> what other rodent or parasitic insects do you get rid of? Oh, wow. Well. I just got my pestis, my uh, rodent license, my, not rodent, but my wildlife license, so I can do any kind of wildlife, up from bears to deer to you know anything like that. Um, as far as rodents, groundhogs or woodchucks, depends on what state you live in or what you call them. Uh, beavers, um, squirrels, you know, bats, you name it, and I can do them all. Um, parasitic insects like what do you mean as far as parasitic insects like uh, mosquitoes ticks fleas um i don't do body lice i don't do louse that don't deal with lice at all um that's really doctors do that so you know and basically anything that i can that i can do i can tell you you know you can ask me what i can and can't get rid of mostly anything as long as it doesn't you know it's not living on your body you know i'm not a doctor that's really more of a doctor thing as far as parasites um uh labeth cooper will crossfire work with diatomaceous earth yes it will it will work. If you want to use diatomaceous earth, you can, but you don't have to use diatomaceous earth if you're using Crossfire. Um, typically what I do, this is what I do, if I'm going to use dust, and this is any dust, they have a really good dust called Alpine, and it's got diatomaceous earth in it, the bulk of it, that's what it is, but it's also got Alpine in it, which um, I'm not going to even try to pronounce the chemical name, but Alpine is, uh, and yes, I do take care of bird mites and ticks. But um, Alpine has a neonicotinoid in it as well. And so what you could do is you can unscrew the outlet covers on your walls, uh, your light switches, switch plates, stuff like that. And you can dust in the wall that way. 
And so uh, that's your entry point. See, the thing about bed bugs is if they're going to go anywhere into the wall, they're going to go in around where they can, like outlet plates, switch plates, baseboards, um, your molding trim around your windows and your doors, like your bedroom trim and your window trim. Uh, so you can dust around those. It's really, really, really effective to try to keep them from going into the wall. And if they are in the wall and they try to come out of the wall, they die. Um, I also treat those areas with um, crossfire though as well. You don't want your dust to get wet because it, it limits the effectability of your dust. So you don't really want your dust to get wet. You can use diatomaceous earth as a wettable powder-ish kind of thing inside your tanks. And uh, when your pesticide dries, it does leave the diatoms there and they still will work. Where a pesticide dust, uh, a lot of times, will lose its effectiveness once it gets wet and it will no longer kill anything even after it's dry. But uh, the diatoms and boric acid both will still work even after they dry out. So that's one thing about using them, but I wouldn't really suggest using them as a wettable powder because they will clog the screens up in your sprayers. They'll clog your tips up. They're not really, I don't advise it. I advise using a duster, which if you, uh, if you watch this back later, you can re rewind a little bit. And I actually show a picture of a duster that I recommend using for diatomaceous earth. So, and yes, you can use crossfire in schools. You can use crossfire in schools. You can use it anywhere. It's it's uh it's effective anywhere. Actually, before I before before I say that, let me make sure. Cause I'm pretty sure you can, but let me make sure. We can find out. We can find out. We sure can. Mm-hmm. I'm pretty sure you can use the aerosol anyway. Um. It's just for bed bugs, though. That's the thing. You can't use Crossfire for uh, anything other than bed bugs. It's the only thing that it's for. The only thing it's for. Oh, Brooke. <laughs> Good luck. Um, yes, diatomaceous earth will kill roaches. It'll kill any insect. It's effective on any insect. It'll kill spiders. Kill any bugs. Um, let's see here. Use restrictions. Here we go. There, here's your restrictions. This product is not for use on humans or animals. Do not spray product directly on pets. Not for broadcast use. Now this is, this is what I try to explain to people when it comes to broadcast spray. It's not, broadcast means you can't spray everything. You can't spray the walls. You can't spray the floor. You can't spray... Basically, if you're going to do a broadcast treatment, it's typically for fleas, not for bed bugs. Bed bugs don't live everywhere anyway. They just live on the beds. Um, and of course, your bed frames and, and in the cracks and crevices around your room. They're not going to live in the carpets. Um, a lot of people think they do, but they don't. They actually don't. They live typically around the edges of the carpet where it tucks into the wall around the uh, tack strips. They will live around tack strips. Uh, do not use in commercial food processing preparation food, which is normal. Typically, you're not going to have bed bugs in areas like that anyway. Uh, in the home, all food processing surfaces, utensils should be covered during treatment, thoroughly washed before use, cover and remove exposed food, which that's duh, that's on every label of every chemical. Um, remove pets, birds, cover fish aquariums before spraying, always. This product will stain, will not stain water safe fabric surfaces, however care should be taken to test an inconspicuous area for staining prior to use. Do not allow adults, children, pets enter a treated area until sprays are dry, which is what I always I always tell people. Um, do not treat areas when occupants are present. Do not spray, do not apply as a space spray. That means like a fog. It should never be treated as a fog where you can breathe it in. Do not wet articles to the point of runoff or drip. So if you're spraying your mattress, you don't want to soak it so much it actually drips off. Um, do not use treated articles until spray has dried. So if you treat your mattress, don't use it until after it's dry. This is just like, you know, brain dead stuff. You'd have to be brain dead to try to do any of this stuff. <laughs> it's telling you not to do. And basically that's it. That's all the restrictions it tells you. It doesn't, it doesn't say not to use it in schools at all. It's, uh, that's it. That's it. 
So to answer your question, you absolutely can use it in schools. You can use it in hospitals. You can use it in nursing homes. You know, you can use it in the libraries. You can use it anywhere uh, that bed bugs are present, basically, is, is where they say, you know, anywhere, anywhere and everywhere. It's very safe. It has no signal word. It just says keep out of reach of children, but it doesn't say poison, warning, caution, danger, no signal word whatsoever. Um, yeah, you could you could use powder after the after the uh, crossfire dries. That would be fine, Labeth. Um, I think I've answered everybody's questions. So use the powder after the crossfire dries. Now, usually I'll put it places I'm not going to spray. Like if you're putting it in the wall around outlet covers, you're not going to spray there because you don't want to spray liquid on an electrical outlet. That's not a good idea ever. So um, I do it all at once. So what I'll do is I'll go in and I will uh, take off the outlet covers, dust inside the wall around the outlet covers, um, and then I put the outlet covers back on and then I go through and I treat with crossfire. So you could treat all the cracks and crevices around your baseboards, crown molding, um, you know, places that you're not going to, you, typically you dust places you can't spray. That's what the dust is for. The dust is for places you can't spray because the dust is not going to hurt the electrical outlets because it's not wet. It's not going to conduct electricity. It's just diatomaceous earth. So you're safe in dusting. And like I was showing earlier in the video, you have to apply the dust properly. You have to turn your duster upside down and kind of puff it in there. And that's the way you want to dust with diatomaceous earth. You don't want to clump it up. You don't want it to be piled up because if it piles up, the um, they're not going to go in it. They're 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 not they're going to avoid it. They're, it's not going to work. You want it to be a very light dust. You don't want to use it really really heavily. Um, what software are you using to share your screen in the background? It looks cool. Oh, um, it's a green screen. See this? Watch. Ooh. <laughs> I uh, I'm using OBS, which is um, I could tell you the acronym. I used to know it. But I use OBS and I've got a chroma key, so that's what I'm using to do my live stream tonight. So let me actually go ahead and hide my... Oh, if I can get my mouse to work. There we go. So that's my background tonight. But I, I like to have my browser open so I can actually show you things that I can search. <clears throat> but yeah, Labeth, no problem. Anytime you have a question, I'm always here to answer any questions anybody has. That's what I do this for. That's what I do YouTube for. A lot of people criticize me on YouTube and they like to say, oh, this guy, you can't believe him. He's awful. He's horrible. He's just trying to make a buck. I'm doing this for free. I'm giving you information out there for free. Always. I always give free information. I think information should always be free. I think you should have the ability to do anything that you want and try anything that you want. If you want to try it yourself, try it yourself. If it doesn't work for you, call me. I can do it. You know, as long as you're local to Virginia, I can do it so far. <laughs> I, uh, I would like if, I will say that I'd like, uh, you know, any other exterminators if they want to contact me, um, you know, for someone I could refer to, I'd like that too. If, if, you know, I get a lot of people that ask, do you know somebody in my area? Do you know somebody in my area? I'd like to be able to refer you if, uh, you know, if you want, you can contact me through Twitter or Facebook or somewhere. Um, I use Precore 2000 for fleas. That's cool. I use, uh, I use several different things. There's lots of different things you can use for fleas. You just have to be careful. You have to read your label. This is the thing. A lot of people criticize me because I don't, I don't tell which chemicals I use. The reason I don't really share a lot of information on pesticides that I use for this, that, or the other, because the labels change all the time. Um, for example, I showed the label for Demon earlier. Um, when I first started using Demon Max, I was probably eight or nine years old. Um, since then, back then, you had Demon, you had Dursban, Diazinon, uh, Chloridane was still used up until 89. Um, Dursban is a really good example. It's a label that changed 
over the years and where they would allow you to use it like indoors towards the end of the life of Durr's band before they actually outlawed it completely, you couldn't even use it indoors anymore. So I don't want to give somebody advice on YouTube that these videos are going to be up. Like my first video I did about heat treatments on bed bugs has been up for over a year. Um, things change in a year. And what I tell people to use now for fleas is going to change next year. And I don't want to tell you, yeah, you can use this, it's going to kill fleas, and then next year the label has changed, and now you can no longer use it for fleas. So that's the main reason now. Crossfire is just for bed bugs. It's always going to be for bed bugs. I mean, they might. They might end up adding like cockroaches or something to the label. But the whole reason that Crossfire was invented was to kill bed bugs. It's invented to target bed bugs. That's what it's for. So... I don't feel so bad telling people, oh yeah, go use Crossfire, but I don't want somebody to go out and buy a chemical and use it for fleas and then poison their pets or hurt themselves. So that's the main reason I don't really give out a whole lot of chemical. That's why a lot of exterminators don't give out, you know, the chemicals they use. Now, if I treated your house, I have to tell you what chemical I use. That's the law. You know, and everybody that I do work for knows what I'm using in their house, all the way down to the EPA registration number. All of that stuff I make available to my customers because that's the law. But, you know, when it comes to actually giving out advice to people, I don't want you to get sick. I don't want you to hurt yourself. And a lot of times, like I was explaining earlier, it's better to hire pest control out to get rid of things like cockroaches. If you can't afford it, you know, look into getting a loan or try to, you know, ask family or church. Um, I've known of, of uh, social services can, can help in really, you know, really bad instances where the roaches are just out of control. I've had, I've actually seen social services step in and help people get rid of their cockroaches. So, you know, there have been instances where you can get rid of the roaches. You don't have to live with them. They are a health hazard. And just because you don't have the income doesn't mean there's not somebody out there that can help you. You know, um, which area in the U.S. has the most bed bug infestations? That's hard to say, Westwood. Um, actually, when it comes to bed bug infestations, you want to look towards places like D.C. Actually, the number one city. Hey, Alicia, isn't the number one city Minneapolis what? for bed bugs? I have to check and see what it is. My wife. Okay. This is something we've got in the works, and I've kind of dropped hints here and there on the channel, and I've got a couple of videos asking for help. All right. Next, this year, 2018, this year, we have a trip planned that we're going to do for Green Acres Pest Control. We're going to travel across the country. We're going to go to Minneapolis, and we are going to go and stay in hotels. We're going to stay in cheap hotels. We're going to stay at ritzy hotels. And we're going to show you how bad the bed bugs have gotten. Um, the, reason, the reason we decided to do this is because back in October, we went to Disney World. Um, Minneapolis is 15, to oh, so Minneapolis is number 15. Number one is New York City. Number one's New York. Okay, so she just looked it up. She's, she's, my, she's Miss, Miss Google. Um, but anyway... Uh, so we're traveling across the country and we're going to visit hotels and we're going to stay in bed bug hotels and all kinds of different places all across the country. We're just going to stay there. And if the room has bed bugs, we're going to show you uh, how to pack to try to keep from bringing them home. And, and that's what we're going to do. I need people to interview. Um, I need people to volunteer information. Uh, I want to put you on my channel. Uh, I don't have to put your face. I don't. I can disguise your face. I can disguise your voice. Uh, you don't have to be known to have bed bugs. Um, it's just something that I want to do to help people because I feel like there's not enough knowledge out there about uh, how not to infest yourself, how not to deal with this problem, how to how to how to save yourself from having this problem in the future. And so we've planned on doing this. It's going to be like a documentary style thing. It's the first time I've ever done anything like this. But I think we always do a big family vacation about once every two or three years anyway and so i've got family that live in minnesota i got family that live in uh wisconsin um not minnesota is it wisconsin yeah something like that up there somewhere i'm in virginia so it's, it's up there but anyway up where it's where i would never go right now because it's too cold uh but but yeah we're gonna travel and we're gonna visit some places and uh 
you know, maybe drop in and talk to some people and get some advice and get find out what they've been doing to deal with their problem. So anyway, uh, let's see, what else have we got here? I had those. Um, do you know if flea tick collars are built? All right, I wouldn't use a flea or tick collar for bed bugs just because they're for flea and ticks. Um, I don't know if they work or not. Um, they might keep them off of your pets, but I don't think they're going to work to... Uh, I had those collars on all my animals and didn't see any fleas, ticks, bed bugs, etc. All right, so bed bugs will not live on your pets. They'll live near your pet, but they won't live on your pet. So you won't actually find them. You might find them on your pet if they're biting your pet, but they're not actually going to live on your pet. They can't actually grab on and hold on like a flea can. So that's one reason you won't see them. Now, you won't see flick fleas or ticks because the way a flea collar typically works is it does release a slow, a slow amount of pesticide into the animal's bloodstream, and so it will kill the fleas and ticks if they bite the pet, typically. That's usually how they work. Back so many years ago, hearts, I know, made a tick and flea collar that actually killed some pets because it was too high of a concentration, actually killed a few pets. So um, that's that's one thing about the, the flea collars. I typically don't like them anyway because dogs, I've always had chewers, and they'll chew the collar off and make them sick, so I, I don't really like flea collars myself. Um, I wouldn't actually use them for bed bugs or anything like that, like on yourself. No, never. I would never do that. Um, do those electric... No, they don't, Jay. Do those electric repellent things work? <laughs> I'll tell you a funny story. Back when they first came out with those things, they used to have them on late night TV all the time. And they talk about how uh, you could buy these... It, save yourself from harsh pesticides don't use chemicals in your house anymore and you they got these little things and the lady's like oh it's so wonderful you know so happy because she's got these things plugged in the wall and she doesn't have any bugs anymore i've gone in people's house unplugged those things pulled them away from the wall and found roaches crawling inside them so for something that's supposed to repel bugs roaches like to live in them so no they don't work. That's that's just, it, there's no science that backs them up. There's nothing that backs them up. They're just a scam. They don't work. I ought to do a video on that because I do a lot of scam videos. I ought to do one. That'd be hilarious. Uh, I had a feeling it was New York City. I thought that, yeah. yeah. Um, that's true. I know what you mean about label changing all the time. Yeah, that's right, Daniel. Uh, You know, Brooke, the thing about the thing about flea and tick collars is they are typically very low concentration. Um, let me look it up. Let me look it up real quick. Seresto, S E R. and tick collar. Let's look at the label. I, I always, I always go to the label. If you watch my videos about, you know, how to do this, how to do that, always, always follow the label. Um, okay, this is for cats. Let's share this window here. If I can, come on. Oh, is that it? That's what you're talking about, right? All right, it says eight-month protection against fleas and ticks. It's a bear product. It's got imidacloprid. Wow, it's a neonicotinoid. Yeah, that would probably kill bed bugs. Imidacloprid kills bed bugs. Um, that's the active ingredient in Tempered. It has to be applied every two weeks. It's That's why I don't like it. Um, that's why I don't recommend it. For bed bugs, that is. Um, kills... Yeah, but it's really formulated for fleas and ticks. That's what it's formulated for. See, the thing about pesticide is, now that I know what it is, I, there's no reason to, to have it up anymore. Um, but the reason that I don't typically advise using things like this, like the, th the thing is a flea collar, the chemical in the flea collar is actually formulated to kill fleas and ticks. The formula is going to be different for bed bugs than it is for fleas and ticks. 
just like you wouldn't necessarily use the same. Now, a lot of people don't know this, but you don't necessarily use the same chemical for ants that you use for spiders because spiders react differently to different families of pesticides than ants do. Ants don't like synthetic pyrethroids because pyrethroids are highly repellent to ants. They recognize them, they won't crawl through them. But synthetic pyrethroids work really, really well for spiders. So depending on what the chemical is actually formulated for is what you want to use it for. That's what the, for the formula is actually designed for that insect in mind. So the reason I say these flea collars are not going to work is they might, now the, the bed bugs probably won't bite the cat because the cat's going to have imidacloprid in its bloodstream. Imidacloprid is, this, like I said, it's the same active ingredient that's what's in temperate. So it's very effective for temperate, but I mean in temperate. But see, temperate is something you're mixing for bed bugs. You're actually going to mix it and formulate it yourself for bed bugs. But what's in the flea collar is going to be a quite a less concentration because it actually has to go into the cat's bloodstream and it has to kill what gets on the cat or the dog for that matter. And so that's what you have to keep in mind. And that's why it's not really going to work. You can't take the collar and lay it on the floor and have it kill bed bugs. That's not the way it's going to work. It's only going to work to keep them off of the cats and the dogs, you know. And yeah, they probably won't work. They probably won't bite the cat or dog. And if they did, they'd probably die. So. But that's good. If those collars are really working for you, I guarantee you it's because it's got a midocloprid in them. And a midocloprid is very safe for pets. It's not going to hurt your pets because it's a neonicotinoid. And most neonicotinoids do not hurt mammals at all. And so it's, it's very effective. It works on the same general idea as fipronil when fipronil came out, uh, which fipronil is not a neonicotinoid. It's something else. But um, it works on the same way where it, it's very safe for mammals, but it will... Uh, it will kill the fleas and the ticks and things like that. Um, which fipronil is the active ingredient front line, front line for those that don't know. That's what that's in. Um, but yeah, it probably would. It probably would work to deter the bed bugs from biting the cat. I don't think bed bugs would bite the cat. I don't think they'd bite a dog or anything that actually had the collar. I don't think it would work. Um, but don't be wearing dog collars to keep you know bed bugs from biting you. You don't want to do that. I don't advise that. You don't want to get sick. You will get sick. Because <laughs> it's not just, let me see, let me scroll up here. It's not just imidacloprid that's in it. It's also a uh, synthetic pyrethroid. Um, uh, it's, oh man, I can't read that. Flumethrin, which is a uh, synthetic pyrethroid. And it's got other ingredients too that you don't know what they are. So, but yeah, that's good to know. If if uh, if it works really good for fleas and ticks, I need that information because people ask me all the time what I would require, what I would uh, advise for fleas and ticks. Oh, let's see, Facebook. Ah, <sighs> so if anybody else has any questions, I kind of got away from. The bed bugs. Let's see here. Actually, let's go back to bed bugs. Let's talk more about the bed bug life cycle. All right, so what happens? The eggs hatch from the time they're laid. It takes them about six to ten days to hatch. Not very long at all. Um, uh, so the, let's see, the eggs hatch takes them six to ten days to hatch. Sorry, I was replying to a uh, Facebook message. Um, then the nymph hatches. They do not bite you when they first hatch. They wait about seven to ten days and then they bite you. Then they go on to the second stage. What happens is they bite you, they engorge on blood, and they shed their skin, much like a snake does. They wait seven to ten days they bite you again, and they shed their skin a second time in the second stage. Then they become the third stage bed bug, and they wait seven to ten days. They bite you again. They shed their skin, and so on and so forth, until they become an adult. Now, this is the problem with bed bugs. This is why people don't realize they have bed bugs. 
because you can get a bug bite, like a one bite. And, you know, it could be a mosquito. It could be a flea. It could be anything, you know, but you got a bite. And then a week or two later, after that bite's already healed and you forgot about it, you get another bite. All right, and so this goes on for about 45 to 50 days. You get bit about every week or so, every other week or so. And, and also their feeding habits lessen. You only need, a bed bug only needs to feed once every 45 days in the nymph stage to live. So a month and a half, you may not get bit for a month and a half before that bed bug decides it wants a second blood meal or a third blood meal, or a fourth blood meal. And the way I know this is because um, when it comes to, all right, I wanna, I'm want i thinking about getting a bed bug dog, which they're the ones that will actually smell the, um, they can smell active infestation of bed bugs in a home. And you can use them to help clear a house of bed bugs if, uh, you know, if you're worried, if, you, you know, if three months go by or something and you're concerned that maybe the house uh, might still have an infestation, but you can't find any live bugs. You could take a dog in, they could sniff, they could tell you if there's live bugs or not. Um, in order to keep a dog trained on bed bugs, you need to feed, you need to keep an active infest, you have to keep active bed bugs. So basically you have live bed bugs in a vial that, you, that for odor, so the dog knows. They only have to be fed once every 45 days and that's every stage. So if you have young ones or, you know, not full grown, they're just babies, you can feed them every 45 days. You don't have to feed them, but once every 45 days. So that just gives you an idea. It could be six, seven months before you've got an adult bed bug. Okay, so now it's an adult. Now it can bite you all the time. And every time it bites you, it has an ability to use that blood to lay eggs. So that's why it's so difficult to pinpoint whether or not you have bed bugs or not. So keep that in mind. If just because you're getting bit every now and then, it could be fleas, it could be bed bugs. You know, check your mattresses, check your box springs, check the skirting around the bed for blood stains, for their droppings, which look like little, it looks like uh, little grease smears. Like if you had just changed motor oil, like little black grease, and touched the side of your bed, that's kind of what it looks like if you've got bed bugs. Um, Oh, new license. I just got approved uh, through the state of Virginia to do wildlife. Um, so basically, the way that works with wildlife, um, you can, with wildlife license, it allows you to take care of nuisance wildlife that doesn't actually fall under pest control. Um, bats are a protected species. You have to have a wildlife license to mess with bats. Uh, basically anything that can carry rabies, like uh, skunks. Um, you can't deal with feral cats. That's really more of, of the pound and the dog catchers that deal with those. Um, but you could deal with skunks. You could do... Uh, trap snakes? Oh, yeah, I could trap snakes. Squirrels. Squirrels, yeah, I know. Yeah, squirrels. Uh, groundhogs, beavers, you know, bears. Yeah, basically anything that... You know, now bears do have a hunting season. But if someone hires you, like on their farm or something, to deal with nuisance bears that might be getting in and killing livestock or something like that, then you could use like bear traps and things like that. So that's that's what I just I actually just got my license like 92% on my on my test. It's not that hard. But <laughs> so as soon as it comes in the mail, I'm still waiting. I check the mailbox every day because I'm expecting it any day now. So, but that's the government. And whenever you send them anything, and they're supposed to send something back to you, well, you know how that is. So. It's not different in Virginia. I don't know where you're from, but it's no different in Virginia. So, what are you talking about? Uh, Brooke, are you talking about bed bugs that smell? Yeah, they do smell. They have a smell. You can smell them. Especially when they're really, really heavily, heavily concentrated. You can smell them. They're, they're pretty, uh, pretty stinky. So, but anyway, all right. So, that's the basic life cycle of a bed bug. Um, the eggs aren't very big, like I was showing earlier. They're about the size of a pencil. Uh, well, half half of a grain of uncooked rice. That's how bed. That's how big a bed bug egg is. This is actually. Let me show you a picture. If I can. Oh, you know what? I think that's on my other computer. I don't have that picture. 
I have a picture of a bed bug that I took on a quarter. I think... Actually, I believe it's on my Instagram. Let's see if I can bring up Instagram real quick. Oh, that's a new one that I just started doing here lately too, is Instagram. Um, Let's share that. There's my Instagram. All right. Some different things here. Jason Lee Shakers. That's my wife. Jason. Of course, my wife's name's not Jason, but uh, it's Jason Alicia Acres. That's my Instagram. Oh, I would use Green Acres PC, but that's the one we got. And so here's a picture of a bed bug here that I took. Now that's that's probably second in star. Uh, like it had just fed, just set shit at skin. That one is dead. So that gives you an idea of about the size. You can see them. They're, they're, they're definitely visible. Um, are there other places where you can catch bed bugs? I've heard you can get them from a movie. Yes. Yes. All of the above. You can get them at the movie theater. You can get them in libraries. And you can get them at clothing stores. You can get them anywhere people spend a lot of time. Actually, libraries are very common. The Lynchburg City Library in Virginia was shut down for a week because they got bed bugs in the library. Um, but when you think about it, if a kid goes and they check out a book, they get a book, and they go, they take that book home, they're reading a story. Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, in bed. This is what I did once. That's why I say this. And I was reading, I love those books, by the way. So I was reading Charlie and the Chocolate Factory in the bed, fell asleep, woke up the next morning, had rolled over on the bed, on the book. So I slept with the book in the bed. That's, that's actually pretty common. Um, I will be right back. I'll be right back. Sorry about that. I had to use Bavern. Couldn't hold it any longer. <laughs> All right. I think I got mine from a thrift store. Yes. Now everything goes in the dryer before I wash it. I won't go through this ever again. 
Okay, yeah. Yeah, actually, um, I had a customer one time. It's one of the worst bed bug infested homes I, uh, I've ever been in. The bed bugs were living in the, on the ceiling. They were living around the crown molding. They were living on her sofa. They were living in her bedroom. They were living in her kitchen, bathrooms. They were everywhere. They were in every room of the house. She actually brought them in because a family member had given her a couch. And it was a family member, so she assumed that it was fine. But the family member actually had bed bugs, and so she ended up getting bed bugs in her home from a family member. So it does it does happen. It's very common to get it from furniture, um, from thrift stores, from clothing. Uh, you know, a lot of thrift stores and stuff like Goodwill, if they don't actually wash the clothes before they hang them up and put them out on the racks, which a lot of times they do not, then you have the risk of having, um, you know, clothing that you purchase having bed bugs in like pockets. Uh, I had a customer one time whose friend actually came to visit her, brought them, he sat down on the couch and the bed bugs crawled out of his pocket into her couch. So that does happen. You know, people can bring them, you can get them in clothing, you can get them in furniture. Uh, if a couch is sitting out on the corner, a lot of times people will say, man, that looks like a great couch, or I can't believe someone's throwing this bed away. It's perfectly good. And then they'll bring it home, the bed frame. You know, maybe the mattress and the box spring have already been thrown away. Maybe it's just the bed frame. And they bring it home, and then they have bed bugs. So there's a reason. If it looks perfectly good, it's probably not. People don't just throw away perfectly good furniture. You know, there's a reason it's out on the corner, and it's probably not worth bringing it in your home, you know. So just, just keep that in mind. Even when it comes to landlords, you know, a lot of times landlords will uh, throw away, they'll throw away um, bed beds, they'll throw away dressers and stuff if they've evicted somebody. You know, a lot of times landlords will keep their furniture because they will use it to rent, they'll, they'll rent furniture to, to new tenants. If the furniture is not decent, you know, you don't want it. You don't want it. Landlord doesn't want it. You don't want it either. So, I don't have very many people following me on Instagram. Just noticing I got 18 people following me. Is that I'm following people? I'm following 18 people and 7 people are following me. So, I don't have a whole lot of people following me on Instagram. But, yeah, I take all kinds of pictures. This was a pretty bad one here. This was uh, this is my favorite picture that I ever took of bed bugs. This is a really good one because you can see the eggs and everything. You can see the babies, the nymphs. You can see the hat, the uh, the um, the casings and stuff where they shed their casings. You can see eggs. There's one spot in here where there's really good little cluster of eggs. Oh, here's one right here. Here's an egg. Here's eggs. Eggs. See that? That's a really good good. Uh, it's all the different life cycles are in this picture too. It's the eggs, the babies, nymphs, the full grown bed bugs fully fed bed bugs everything so it's a really good picture i like it so if you're ever interested in you know seeing cool pictures of bugs you can always follow me on instagram anytime i see a cool picture here's a picture i took it says uh, uh one of these kills bed bugs and one does not that's that's me by the way i'm, I'm the one that kills the bed bugs in case you guys were wondering so <laughs> Oh yeah, Brooke. Uh, the people that typically follow me uh, don't really have bugs. I've got friends that follow me. They don't have bugs. They're just curious on what what I found, what I want to see, what I see. Are there reports of bed bugs on airplanes? If so, do you protect yourself from that? How do you protect yourself? You know, I don't know. I honestly don't know. That's something I should look into. That's really interesting. I've never thought about airplanes, but I imagine they would get on airplanes. Sorry, I'm really thirsty. I've been fighting. <clears throat> Try to get over this flu. I've had it. And uh, trying to keep well hydrated. So, anyway, yeah, I get a lot of bed bug pictures. I take a lot of bed bug pictures because I get called on a lot of bed bugs. This is a, a oriental cockroach. This is actually a, flute, a fruit fly trap that I made um, to help with fruit flies in the house. All this is is, is uh, apple cider vinegar and a funnel and a glass. And it's sealed around the rim with some scotch tape, which you can't really see, but the tape 
is around the rim. That works really well if you have problems with fruit flies. Um, let's see here. There was one other thing I wanted to talk about, and I can't remember what it was. Oh, that's going to frustrate me now. Hmm. But anyway, like I was saying earlier, if you're really interested in uh, like finding out what you've got, or you can see this this little tweet right here. Tweet picks at Green Acres PC. Now, what's that for? What what is that for? That is for if you're uh, curious about what kind of bugs you might have in your house, you can tweet to that, and I'll answer you. I'll I'll tweet back, um, and I'll tell you what it is. If you want to know what kind of picture of bugs, if you've got a spider, if you've got a cockroach, if you've got a flea, or you know any bug, you don't know what it is, you can tweet me that picture. Like uh, water bugs. Here's a good one. Now, a lot of people think water bugs are cockroaches. This is a water bug. Now, a lot of times people will call a oriental cockroach. This is an oriental cockroach. A lot of people will call oriental cockroaches water bugs. Water bugs, another name for a water bug, it's a toe biter. They will get you when you're in swampy marshland type areas. They'll bite you on the toe. They pinch you with those big pinchers right here. So that's a water bug. See, he's got one actually biting that guy's toe right there in that picture. So um, if you've got pictures of any bugs, I actually had somebody tweet me, or uh, not tweet me, but uh, send me a picture in my email of a water bug and want to know what it was. They found one in their garage. It freaked them out because it's huge. They're like that big, like the size of a mouse. And uh, they actually do eat small fish and things. So I had to look it up to find out what it was. What about cruise ships and cabins? Do you treat it like you are checking into your hotel room for bed bugs? That's going to be kind of hard because cruise ships aren't really, most cruise ships sail out of Nassau, which means they're not under the same laws as the United States. So when it comes to getting switched from one cabin to another, that's gonna be pretty hard and they probably don't even have to accommodate you at all. So I wouldn't bet on it, um, being able to switch. Um, honestly, I don't know, I love to cruise. I've only ever been on one, but I've been trying to get my wife to go on another one. She would try to make you believe she's trying to get me to go on one, but I've been wanting to go on one since I left the first one. But anyway, um, yeah, to tell you the truth, I have no idea. I don't know about cruise ships or cabins or what to do because, I mean, those are really tight cabins. You're not going to hide from a bed bug if they're in there. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. My wife, she just reminded me. She said, you typically don't even check into your cabin until after you set sail. I mean, so what do you do? Let's say you get on the boat. and Because typically you do. You get on the boat, and the boat is setting sail. And they're still cleaning your room. So you're on the ocean three hours. And now you get to go in your cabin. You're in the middle of the ocean. And your cabin has bed bugs. What do you do? That's that's a really I I think maybe I have to go on a cruise. Uh, that, see now when we go on our vacation we go on a cruise. That's what we need to do. That sounds like a fun thing. That's a fun thing right there. I, mean, I would go to the management for sure and look at Oh yeah, yeah I would. Well you know you go to your management maybe you get some free booze or something. You know how it is on a cruise if you've ever been cruising before. But Westwood the thing is. It, it, it is. It, it almost it creates like a PTSD type experience in you where you're terrified to even go to visit family. You know, you, you don't want to visit family. You don't want to. You just want to stay at home and be a hermit. And that's no fun. You know, you want to be able to have. And that's why, like I said, that we're going to go on this vacation this year, because I want to show people that you can enjoy a vacation even if you don't want bed bugs you can go on vacation and not worry uh, this is what you can do these are places you can go this is how you can avoid bed bugs you can always camp you know if you really want to but people like to be able to go to you know people don't want to have to camp everywhere they go you know bed bugs aren't going to bother you typically if you camp but if you're going to a hotel that's where you're going to get them. I actually have a, my, uh, a friend of mine is actually wanting to go to Hawaii and camp in Hawaii. I'm like, you're going to go all the way to Hawaii? Hawaii? 
stay in a hotel. If you're going to spend that much money to go to Hawaii, stay in a hotel. You know, so. <laughs> Brooke says, just decontaminate after the trip. Yeah, kill them and all of your stuff before you bring them in your house. You can actually, uh, I had a lady one time that I did her house. She kept all of her stuff in her garage so that when I, because I couldn't get to her house right away. I was actually out of town when this occurred. And when we were finally able to catch up with her, she had all of her stuff in the garage far away on the opposite side. It was cold. So this stuff, and actually I found bed bugs in her luggage bag. So it's a good thing she didn't bring them in the house. And she never got bed bugs in the house. She kept them away from the house. She kept them in her cold garage. And when I finally was able to get by there and treat the house, I checked every piece of her luggage and everything for bed bugs. I did find one nymph in her bed bug. She's actually the one that gave me that picture that I showed you on the quarter. Uh, she actually saved one from her hotel where she found them in the hotel. And she put in a little bottle and, and saved it for me so I could see it. Made definitely bed bugs. But yeah, see, that's that's the important thing. If you know that you've got bed bugs somewhere, when you get home, just be careful not to take them in. If you have them in your clothing, your luggage, or anything like that, and you, and you have to have your clothes, put them in a trash bag, take them in, put them in the wash, wash them. Make sure you wash them on hot water. Make sure you dry on high heat. Turn up the hot water in your uh, hot water tank so that it's it's good and hot when you wash your clothes. And so that you know you're you're using heat now heat treatments in a confined space like a washer or a dryer works but heat when it's in your apartment or your uh you know wherever you're living your house your apartment whatever it's not going to work in those areas so well i'm going on about an hour and 15 minutes here. I got five people watching the channel right now. If there's any questions, uh, don't hesitate to, to ask if you have anything you want to ask me. Um, I'm happy to answer any questions that you have. Otherwise, I am probably going to call it a night. And uh, just so you know, I, I'm trying to do these live streams every Friday night, uh, the Bed Bug Show, and it is a live a live feed so you can ask me questions uh, live like I said all the different things we've talked about tonight it's been more than just bed bugs it's been you know like I said I got water bugs up there now we talked about mice we talked about uh, you know the different things I go after the roaches uh, fleas ticks bed bugs you name it we talk about it all I uh, in 30 years I've dealt with just about everything I could imagine or you could imagine um, that's one thing I was thinking about when I went. I had to go run to the bathroom real quick because I, man, I hold it as long as I can. But I drink water, and these live streams, they, huh, I can't just sit here for over an hour after I've been drinking half a gallon of water. But um, that's one thing. I had a lady ask me one time. She's like, well, so you're pest control, and you go in these people's houses all day long, every day. Where do you use the bathroom? And it kind of took me for a loop because I didn't expect a customer to ask me where I use the bathroom. And I said, well, where do you use the bathroom? I just asked somebody. Or I'll go into a service station. But if I'm at somebody's house and I've got to use the bathroom, I ask them, hey, can I use your bathroom? I need to go. <laughs> and they let me use a bathroom. <laughs> so is there any different way to prepare for bed bugs when you travel? Yes. Okay, so what you want to do when you travel, whether it's internationally, in the States, anywhere, all right, anywhere, if you're going to stay at your family's house for, well, see, like, we just came out of the holiday season, all right, so Christmas has passed, Thanksgiving, all that stuff. Let's say you go to your family for Christmas. Or Easter. Easter's coming up. Let's say you're going to do like an Easter weekend or something, and you're going to stay with family for four or five days. Um, prepare as if they have bed bugs. They may not have bed bugs. You know, you can't assume they have bed bugs, but prepare as if they do. So what you do is you get Ziploc bags, 
and you seal your things in Ziploc bags. Now this sounds crazy, but it works. And if it's gonna keep you from getting infested with bed bugs, it's worth the extra effort. Pack light. Don't pack a whole bunch of stuff you don't need. If you, you know, how long are you gonna be there? Three or four nights? Pack enough underwear, pack enough socks. You know, that's little, doesn't take up much space. You know, if you're going with family, maybe do a load of laundry. You know, don't don't pack a whole bunch of clothes. Don't don't pack like you're gonna go for weeks. Pack just for a couple days, because that's all you're gonna be there for is a couple days. Now I say this as my wife sits over there, she packs like she's going to be gone for three years, and she's only going for three days. Try to pack light. That's that's the biggest piece of advice that I can give you. It's pack light and seal it up. Keep stuff sealed. I'll tell you a good thing you can use, and these are very effective. You can use those vacuum seal uh, bags. You know how they, they used to have them on late night TV when they first came out with them, and they seal with your vacuum cleaner, and it sucks everything really nice and tight. You could take that stuff and you could put it in your luggage now. You can travel with your luggage. You just want to check your luggage when you get home or uh, before you, even, even like in your driveway or whatever. Just check around your zippers, check the inside lining, take the lining out, look around the lining and stuff. Because usually the lining is like Velcro. You could just take it in and out. And just check and make sure you didn't bring anything in your luggage. That's where you're going to get bed bugs. Your bed bugs are going to get in your luggage. They're going to get in your luggage bag. If you've got all of your clothing sealed in bags, they're only going to be able to hide in your luggage. So that really limits. It's not impossible to bring them home, but what it does is it limits the places you have to look. I mean, if you've got four or five bed bugs in your luggage and they can hide in all your clothes, you're probably not going to find them. But if they only are able to hide in just your suitcase alone, because everything else is sealed in like little plastic bags, then that helps a lot. And if they are in your clothes, if you end up wearing your clothes, you know, and you have them and you lay them out on your bed or whatever, and the bed bug gets in them and then you seal them up in those bags, you can see them in the bag. That's the thing. Because they're plastic, you can see through them. So it just, it helps you a lot when it comes to, you know, being able to track them down whether or not they're in your luggage. So that, and, and it's not going to keep them from, from coming home with you. It's just going to make it easier to check up and find them if they are with you. So that way you don't have to be so paranoid about, oh, they're in my underwear, oh, they're in my socks, oh, they're in my pants, they're in my shirt, they're in my jacket. All that stuff is sealed away. You know they're not in that stuff. They can only be in your luggage bag. And, and you can treat your luggage bag. The thing is, you can get Crossfire Aerosol Spray, and you could treat inside your luggage bag, and it will kill anything in the bag. What you're going to get out of your luggage bag, like say you're gone for a week, it takes six to ten days for roaches to for roaches. It takes six to ten days for bed bugs to hatch. So as long as you treat the inside of your luggage bag, you're going to kill all those nips. You're going to kill those bugs after they've hatched, and they don't have anywhere to go but in your luggage bag. You know they're going to they can escape out of your luggage bag, but if you treat your luggage bag with Crossfire, because you can, you can treat anything that's that's possible for for bed bugs to be in. You can treat it. That way, if they do try to crawl out, they die. So it really, it really makes it easy to travel, and it's not something you have to be afraid. You don't have to be afraid to travel. The the biggest, the hardest part about traveling, if you're not used to traveling light, traveling light's the hardest part. You know, if you can travel light, travel light. You know, pack your stuff up. Um, you know, don't don't bring the whole house if you're only going for a few days. So, wife sitting over there. All right, everybody. Well, it's getting kind of late, you guys. I really appreciate everybody coming out tonight. If you like the video, give me a thumbs up. It really helps the channel. Um, I appreciate everybody coming and, and uh, all the questions and everything. Don't forget, if you have any questions at all, you can always hit my Twitter. You can tweet at Green Acres PC. Uh, any pictures or anything like that if you need me to. Um, all right, let's see. There's one more question here. 
let's say, as long as I keep questions, I'll keep on here. I'll stay on. So, uh, let's say you want to go to a carnival in Rio de Janeiro, Brazil. Would Ziploc bags still apply? You may stay in an Airbnb. Also, you are coming from a cold to a hot climate. Bed bugs can be anywhere. I'm not exactly sure that question. I'm really not sure how to answer that question. I'm not really understanding the question exactly. I'd like to go to Rio de Janeiro. I've never been there before, though. <laughs> um... But as far as the Ziploc, see, these are the bags I'm talking about right here. Those are the vacuum seal bags I'm talking about, where you can actually suck the air out and turn it into something flat like that. It allows you to pack more light. But as far as the hypothetical question, uh, if it's hypothetical, that means it doesn't need an answer if that's what you're asking. But um, if you're going to stay anywhere and you're going to pack any luggage at all, then yes, I would still pack in Ziploc bags or these compression bags like this. I would use that. You know, it makes it easier to pack light if you're just packing a few things. Like for a couple days, that's pretty easy. Um, that's like a no-brainer. Yes, I would definitely take bags, Ziplocs, or something like that. Um, <clears throat> if it is a Ziploc, you can use Ziploc bags. Just check around the zipper of the bag, you know, right there in the opening. Like, here, I've got one right here. Now, this is a Ziploc bag here. See... Now that's sealed, and there's nowhere they can hide in that zipper. It's solid, so they can't hide there. But a lot of times your Ziploc bag will have a spot like right here, and the zipper's like down in here. If you get these that lock like this, then you know they can't be anywhere but in the bag, and you can see if they're in there. So you can use Ziploc bags. I, I wouldn't, uh, I would advise to use Ziplocs if you're gonna use anything. It doesn't matter. Bed bugs, all right, this is one thing about cold and bed bugs. The cold will not kill bed bugs. All right, zero degrees Fahrenheit. The temperature has to be zero degrees Fahrenheit and it has to stay at zero degrees Fahrenheit for four days to kill bed bugs. So understand that that's not really very possible. DC is not four degrees right now. DC, DC right now is like 12, 10, 12 degrees. That's not cold enough to kill bed bugs. It's got to be zero degrees Fahrenheit or below and remain that way for four straight days to kill bed bugs. Your freezer likely doesn't even get that cold. So the cold doesn't kill bed bugs. It slows them up, but it does not kill them. Uh, you can kill bed bugs with extreme cold when it drops down to like negative 30, negative 40. That will kill bed bugs. There are machines that they use that will freeze bed bugs, but it only kills them on contact because it's basically, it's, base, it's like liquid nitrogen. And it, it, it makes them like negative 80 degrees. It freezes them, kills them instantly. So, uh, you, yeah, always travel light. Always travel light. If it's just a day or two, always travel light. I like to travel light anyway because I'm lazy. And I don't want to unpack and pack a whole bunch of crap. I want to take a duffel bag or less. I used to, when I used to travel for a week, I would pack all the clothes I needed in a bowling bag. That's what I used. I didn't realize it was a bowling bag till I got older, but it was actually a bowling ball bag. I would pack everything I needed. I would have 
two to three pairs of pants. I'd have underwear and socks to last a week, and I would have shirts. And I would roll them up real tight like they do in the military, and I would stuff them down in there, and that's what I had. That's what I lived off of for like a week out of a bowling bag. That's easy. I mean, you can pack in that. That's like the size of a Walmart bag, you know. You can live out of that. It is possible. And I would just take my laundry to a washing machine and wash it. You know, that way I had clean clothes. So you can do that. You could wear the same clothes, you know, in a week as long as they're clean. You know, who cares if you wear the same thing more than twice? You know, of course, women look at you. They'd be like, like my wife, she's one of these people who likes to wear a different, a different outfit every single day. Every day. Oh, I can't wear that tomorrow. I wore that yesterday. But it's washed and it's clean. Oh, I just can't do that. What would people say? You know what I'm saying? So it may be harder for girls than boys, but, you know, I'll pack one pair or two pairs of blue jeans. I'm good for two or three years. Honestly, I just wash my clothes. <laughs> and you can wear your underwear. Now, you can turn your underwear inside out. You can make them things last for three or four days. That's grungy. Don't do that. Anyway. <laughs> But yeah, that's how my wife is anyway. She's laughing over there because she knows it's true. In fact, I packed more than one outfit a day because what if I don't feel like wearing the outfit? Oh, yeah. See, she packs more. She's just saying, she, I don't know if y'all can hear her or not. She packs more than one outfit for a day because what if she's in a mood for one that she didn't realize she wanted to wear it? So now, or, or she'll, she likes skirts. She wears a lot of skirts. So if she takes one skirt, she'll wear, she'll have multiple shirts that will work with that same skirt. So whatever her mood is, that's what she'll wear that day. So you talk about packing light. That's not packing light. That's, that, that's packing very heavy, very, very heavy, especially when I'm the pack mule that has to carry it all. Cause I do, I carry, I carry all of it, but if I've got to carry it, it's okay. That's how I feel anyway. All right, anyway. Uh, yeah, Rio and Carnival is a party atmosphere. Are you talking about Carnival like the cruise line? Because Carnival, I've heard Carnival is a very, like a party cruise line. We usually travel, what is it that we travel Norwegian. with? Norwegian. Yeah. yeah, Norwegian. That's right. Yeah, we travel Norwegian. And I've got a, a customer of mine that travels Princess a lot when they cruise. But I haven't honestly heard a lot about cruises being infested with bed bugs, but I'm really I'm going to look into that. And if I find anything that is really worth talking about, I will make a video on it. I did not do a video today. I've I've getting a little busy. It's the new year, and a lot of people have been calling me lately, so I haven't had a lot of time to do a lot of videos. But um, because it's just me, I'm a one man band. I'm doing everything. You know, as far as I take calls, I go out on leads, I do it all myself, and. Uh, and so I don't really have a lot of time for videos. It starts to pick up this time of year after the first of the year. It usually picks up pretty good for my business. Um, I try to do a video on Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays. I'm working on a Cockroach Monday series. I've been running every Monday. I do a, uh, I typically do a Spray Jockey's Guide to Exterminating for Wednesdays. I, uh, unless I have any new ideas for that, I'm going to go ahead and put that series on hiatus for a little bit. I'm going to do some other videos that I've got some thoughts for. And then Friday, I usually do like a hodgepodge. It could be anything. I could talk about roaches. I could talk about mice or anything on Fridays. And then, of course, my live streams Friday night around 10 o'clock Eastern time. So uh, whether it's daylight savings time or standard time, it doesn't matter. It's always going to be 10 o'clock Eastern time at night. Uh, that's as, that's probably as early as it's going to be. It might be even later because I've got two kids. My uh, my daughter, is, she'll be five in March, and my son will be, um, he'll be 13 on the 21st. So uh, both of my kids are, you know, they're in bed now, and my, my daughter, she's still wide awake. So she's being very, very well behaved, and she's not coming out here and bouncing all over the place. So that's that's fine with me. That's that's what I like. <laughs> so I can do this and, and uh, you know, talk to you guys. Oh, so it's a festival carnival in Rio de Janeiro in February. Oh, okay. I'll look into that. I like to travel. I really enjoy traveling. I've uh, my whole life I've, I've done nothing but drive everywhere, being in pest control. And I uh, right now I cover the area of Virginia. I go from Charlottesville all the way to Roanoke as far as locally, which is a pretty large area. If you look it up on a map, it's about mm, through two, maybe two and a half hours 
uh, between both of those major cities. And so I travel that whole area just myself. And then I do the whole entire state of Virginia for bed bugs. If calls come in, I do bed bugs. What is that dinging? Is that Facebook dinging me? I don't know why Facebook's even up right now. Let me close that down so then I can talk to you and not be dinging at all the time. But anyway, uh, yeah, so I travel all over the state of Virginia for bed bugs. It's the only thing I do statewide. And the main reason I started going statewide for bed bugs is because I'm so competitive that uh, I feel like I can I can do people pretty right on their bed bug treatments and they don't have to pay a whole lot of money to kill bed bugs. So I go all over the state of Virginia for bed bugs. And um, yeah, so that's what I do. I like to travel. Um, a couple years ago, we went all the way to Maine. We went to every New England state. Uh, beautiful country. Vermont, probably the most beautiful state I've ever been in. Maine was beautiful. Um, it's just amazing, good, good country out that way. We went all the way up to Mount Washington in New Hampshire. Uh, we went to um, Cape Cod. We went to Plymouth Rock and saw all kinds of really cool stuff up in New England. And we camped the whole way. We went nine days and we camped the whole trip. And then uh, two years before that, we went to Cherokee. We traveled the entire parkway, uh, the Blue Ridge Parkway, the whole stretch all the way. And we camped all the way to Cherokee. And then this year, we're planning on doing a northern uh, United States. We're going all the way out to the Midwest and we're going up north to uh, Minnesota. So, and we're going to stay at, um, we're going to stay at, uh, hotels and see about bed bugs across the country and maybe film some documentary on doing that. Uh, Don Don asks, is Advion gel usually effective for German roaches? Yes, Advion is very, very effective. It's a good bait. Uh, baits are just like any other chemical though. You want to uh, switch it up. You don't want to just use Advion. You want to use Advion and maybe like Vendetta. Uh, there's a couple other chemicals out there. Max Force might still work. You might be lucky enough to get it to work. It's got fipronil in it. Uh, a lot of roaches have already become immune to fipronil mainly because of the abuse of the chemical because it was so effective. A lot of people were using it in their spray tanks when they weren't supposed to be. Um, and they were mixing it really lightly, and so it's it's caused a chemical immunity in cockroaches with fipronil. So uh, keep that in mind when you're using your baits. If you find them and they have an active ingredient of fipronil, uh, try with with caution. You know, oh man, my mustache making my nose itch. Uh, so just think of that when you're using your baits. Um, fipronil bait has been known to be the roaches have started to develop immunity to that. Uh, it used to be really good. It used to be really effective. But Advion works and uh, uh, Vendetta, they both are really good gel baits to use. Uh, but on a serious note, I thank you for the ideas of Ziploc bags. And with business travel, yes, I definitely agree with traveling light, yes. It's always good to travel light, always. Yeah, it, now, now convincing your wife to travel light, that's the trick. That's very tricky, so, but anyway. I, uh, unless there's any more questions, I've got five people watching right now. I had eight there a couple minutes ago. If anybody has any questions at all, don't hesitate to ask. Uh, otherwise, I'm going to give it maybe two or three more minutes, and then I'm going to go ahead and log off for the night. Um, if you like the channel, give me a thumbs up. If you really like it, think about subscribing. Uh, hit the little notification bell down there so you can get notified when I'm live like this. Uh, I try to do live streams every Friday night at 10 o'clock Eastern Time, so whatever that translates to wherever you're at, uh, you know, you can catch me live. Uh, right now it is 11.38 Eastern Time, so I've been on for about an hour, hour and 40 minutes. Um, I try to go live at 10 o'clock. I actually made it right on time tonight, right on the dot. So if you guys are uh, interested in catching me live, I'd, it's called the Bed Bug Show, but it's anything. You know, it could be about cockroaches or fleas or ants or ticks or anything. The main reason that I that I name it the Bed Bug Show is because I have so many questions about bed bugs uh, with all the videos on my channel. Um, I figured I would go ahead and make a channel called the Bed Bug Show, so you could just come on and ask any questions about bed bugs you want or anything. It doesn't have to be about bed bugs. Uh, if you want, you can tweet me throughout the week at Green Acres PC, and I will answer your questions on the show. If you can't be here live, 
don't hesitate to send me an answer and send me a question. Let me sh let me see here. Let me go ahead and add a little text in here. Um, and let's say, uh, let's hashtag this. Hashtag bedbug show. There we go. Perfect. And let's select a font. Let's make a pretty font. Let's go with, that's a good one. Let's do bubbles. That way we can make it look a little different than everything else. Okay. And we'll select a color. And perfect. There we go. There. If you have any questions at all and you happen to tweet me or Facebook me, you can use that hashtag bedbugshow. That way I know it's for this show and when we go live I will answer your questions. Um, it is a live show so I, I try to keep with whoever's in the chat if someone's asking questions in the chat but typically when I first start up I don't have any questions because I just went live and so that's when I'll answer your questions you'll get first pick right off the top of the show so if you have any questions that you think of between now and next Friday don't hesitate to send me a tweet and like I said if you hashtag bedbug show it makes it really easy for me to find the question so I guess if that's all for tonight, it's been uh, almost two hours tonight. Uh, it's been a real active chan uh, real active show. I really appreciate everybody coming out who came out and, and contributed to the show tonight. Uh, you guys have a really great night. Uh, enjoy your week. Uh, Happy New Year. We made it. It's 2018. We're all still alive. And uh, I will see you in another, you know, same time next week. Y'all have a really great night. I really appreciate it. Thanks.